But right now, let's get to the part that we've all been waiting for. Let's introduce the cast of the team. Let's start with, he's a bad guy, but we love him, playing Ramsey's Michael Severus. He was considered. <laughs> and it just didn't cost out, which, thank God. But you get 10 comedy points. 
Thank you very much. That means a lot. <laughs> I do love the relationship between Dot and Arthur. And you know, Dot's been looking after Arthur pretty much his entire life. Now he is starting to come, become into his own. She's learning things about him. So ha talk about how she feels now at the end of season 1A. At the end of season 1A, I think it's it's really a dilemma for Dot to sort of figure out what her role is because her role has always been very, very clear to her and it's given her something to do and Dot needs something to do all the time. Um, and taking care of Arthur has been a very full-time job in addition to her several other nefarious jobs. Um, so now that she knows that he's not crazy, this whole world is, is real, she has really has to make a choice about whether or not she's going to engage with it because up to now she's believed that they're just collateral damage and it's not safe to participate but I think she's very capable of holding her own in that world. Yeah, I love, I love your character. She's such a cool chick. She's a woman of many talents. And you know, that relationship is, is surprisingly emotional within this very funny and self-referential world. So for Ben, Barry or David, whoever wants to answer, or for you if you want to answer, how do you straddle that line between being meta and then being very authentic? It's a, I think it's a, it's a really wavy line. Um, I, totally speaking, that was one of the things that we talked about the most. I mean, like, just how much can we take these characters seriously? How much can we really care about them? We really actually, there's no difference, I think, the experience of breaking these stories and working on them. It's, there's no different than working on a, a dramatic one-hour series for us in terms of how these characters worked and how we wanted to develop them. Um, and it was weird to do that because you're also supposed to be snickering at the edge of some kind of dance, looking at the people who are completely earnest and just sort of making fun of their moves or something. So we're completely, uh, like I've said before, maybe hypocritical, but that's been an enjoyable place to be in. Uh, <laughs> Barry? Yeah, Barry. David? <laughs> Barry. Uh, I, th I think what we try to do exactly what Ben says, but we try to skew it just a little bit. I mean, we do uh, come at it, we both, we're both experienced one hour writers, so we've done a lot of story, intensive story and character work. But sometimes we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll come at it from a little bit of a quirky. I mean, the fact that Overkill and Miss Lint seem to have some kind of history, you know, uh, I think is the kind of thing where, yeah, we're grounding it and we're giving them uh, a relationship and we're we're not really saying what it is yet, but we're we're allowing for there to be a life beyond the episode. That there was there's there's more there's more to be uncovered, and I think finding those levels is part of what uh, helps us to you know keep the show grounded make it feel like the characters are, are three-dimensional. Yeah, yeah ben, ben went from graphic novel to, gra ben went from graphic <laughs> novel to animated series to you know live action to now this live action and I think that he you know really wanted to have this be different um, and special and then you know we were really fortunate because up here is our first choice cast yeah and we got to experience this cast yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's really cool. Cool. And we would, we would, you know, we had a read through very early on, and, and these personalities were at that read through, and it was fantastic. And, and we, and I think for you and David, it was a real challenge because you felt like, uh oh, we have to rise to this, and that's how you envisioned it too. It's sort of like a second phase of looking at everybody and how they read and what their talents were. It was just a great experience. Yeah, and of course, at the center of it all is Tick Peter. <laughs> Everything very literally, and of course he's got that great voice. Huh? So, how did you come up with the sound for Tick and, and making sure that he sounded like what we've heard before, but different at the same time? Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't know the character uh, like from the cartoons for the TV show. I'd seen one. I, I, I was aware of the character, and I think maybe I, I bought a couple of the comic books like years before, and somehow they, I, I had. Probably maybe just forgot to read them or something. I don't know what it was, but it's like, why was I not into this thing? I was still so, stinging over all of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, but uh, I, yeah, and it, it made me feel a bit foolish. I blushed when I realized, wow, this this is amazing. This thing it's so beautiful and weird and, and so full of love and heart and 
And it is strange, it's unique, it's and profound as well. Uh, what was this quote I, I, I read from you? Um, oh my God, what a, uh, I, I, I'll try and remember uh, as I talk about something else. I might just, I might just talk like um, just nonsense, but it's, it's, it's while I'm uh, thinking of this. We just have to fill some time and then get, get out. So I don't to talk about it, Junior, but you know what, anyway, this is me thinking now. I can, um, I can appear to be talking, no, no. Uh, so what was the question? It was about uh, the voice. <laughs> Finding the sound. Uh, when I, uh, it, was, it, was, it was me and Ben uh, did a Skype call together. Uh, I wanted to... Uh, it was Barry too, yeah. It was, it was Barry too. And we, uh, I, I, was it my suggestion that I, I said I wanted to read the, the, the lines with you over... Yeah, no, no. It was, we did a little of that, which was cool. Yeah. And that was really good of you to do, because we weren't really formalized at that point. We were both, we were in I still haven't billed you for that Skype session, by the way. You know, that's, right. that's cool. It, it, you know what, it's, it's only like 12 Skype credits, so it's a, don't worry about it. But you can have the rest of my credits, I, I don't do Skype very well. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, it was, it, you, you said this kind of, uh, this, you know, this, he embodies this sort of the psyche of like the classic American superhero, I suppose, like Superman is the purest of those, of those heroes. And, uh, and, and, and with, with also that kind of cheesy uh, American radio announcer circa like late 60s, early 70s, um, which uh, growing up in, uh, in Liverpool, England, just sounded like the most uh, exciting, important. Uh, you've got to come to this place, the United <laughs> States of America. Boy, does your country suck in comparison. <laughs> that's, that's what it felt like to me there. <laughs> Can you give us an attention, citizen? Yeah, uh, uh, attention, citizens. <laughs> Super characters, Brendan. How does it feel to play your character? Do you feel super in that suit? I d d do. Yeah. <laughs> you look super. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, it's you know as long as I'm not doing any physical activity that requires too much in the way of flexibility <laughs> or uh, or bending or running or <laughs> sitting or breathing or uh, yeah. I, yeah. yeah, other so than that, I, I, if you're standing there, I'm standing. I feel great. really great. Okay. How, how's your head? Because it's all exposed. You don't have any <laughs> yeah. kind of uh, mechanical apparatus Which or is laser also... to your face. How, how does your head feel? <laughs> well, it's also hard for me um, because this is a competition. <laughs> I, uh, I really like. I, I don't love the cool breeze on my face and neck. I actually despise it. So I kind of wish I were wearing some sort of enormous headpiece. But you know, some people get lucky. <laughs> well, enormous headpieces, uh, almost enormous. Scott. That's my nickname for him. Enormous too. headpiece. <laughs> Scott Overkill has become a real fan favorite. What, what do you think? Yeah. What, what do you think it is about him that has resonated with people? Oh, um, okay. <laughs> this is good right there, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, what's resonated, well, I don't know what's resonated, no, that we don't have time to, to, for everyone to answer that question. Um, well, I think, I know for me, it's so fun to, uh, to like, get out any type of anger and frustration and, and that I have in my daily life that I can, you know, use with overkill. I mean, he's got one mission to kill the terror, and he's been on that mission, and now all these people, these people that aren't as skilled as he is, um, aren't as angry as he is, don't know enough about weapons, and... <laughs> That's the overflow crowd for overkill. Yeah. Uh, they're all getting it. <laughs> I like the world. <laughs> Who doesn't want Superior to hold a microphone for them? <laughs> I didn't enjoy that. Um, <laughs> really weird. Um, so he's just got all these people that are just in his way, and it's infuriating. And you know, I, I have you know things. I'm generally a pretty nice guy, but I have things that just drive me.
friggin' crazy and, and overkill. And whereas I might hold that back, overkill mm -hmm. is not. It's a cathartic experience. Yeah. Yes, very, it's, a, it's a great release. <laughs> Take it easy, everyone. Well, now we've got to get to, to Michael because at the end of the sixth episode, we lost Ramsey. Really, yeah. really sad. Toasty. So, uh, or oh, did we? Yes. We've actually created a special video to commemorate your short reign. Take, take a look at this. The first time, it was all so fast. <laughs> So do you think, like like the pharaoh he's named after, he, his reign will continue long after he's gone? I mean, so far it's only Ramses IV. <laughs> That's, you know... There's other lovers. lovers. There, there are other Roman numerous. <laughs> what has it been like for you to play this kind of insane character? Um, well, it's, you know, I think sometimes when you, you know, you look at this attractive and, and well-honed uh, cast, the, the the physiques on display and the, the the costumes, and I don't know if people understand that those are those muscles and things are not, you know, it's not the suit. It's like that's just painted on their bodies. It's pretty much how they look. Digitally, they had to shrink my muscles down. Exactly. <laughs> and, and and it can be daunting, I think, for the average viewer to you know and compare themselves to the people they're seeing on screen. And I feel like. Ramses is there as just sort of, you know, to represent all of us who just feel more comfortable in a velour tracksuit. <laughs> so I kind of think of it as a public service. You know, <laughs> Have you seen anyone cosplaying yet? No, not yet, but I God knows I'm looking. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, we have only seen the first half of series one so far, so why don't we give you guys a special sneak peek? <laughs> bits there, but Ben and Barry and David, you guys throw it to each other. Um, we get to explore a bit more of the side characters, maybe, in the second half. Is there anything you can tease about the other characters we might see? Uh, well, I mean, we're, we're definitely, all the relationships that we set up, that's part of the fun that we're going to have, is those become amazing, we get to kind of intertwine and we really have fun with them. That's kind of, there's a lot of things that are laced into the first half. It's pretty um, involved structure, pretty obsessed with that stuff, so it's just, it's set up to give you lots of really nice uh, payoffs. Bombs <coughs> exploding your face full of uh, satisfaction. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, I think that uh, in a general sense, that would give you a, an emotional map for what's coming. Uh, more, more specifically, uh, we'll be seeing a lot more of Superior. Uh, in the back half, uh, as we've said about, we'll be seeing a lot more Danger Boat, uh, played by the brilliant Alan Tudyk. Um, and uh, so some, some, that's some of the relationships we're dealing with. Or Midnight is coming. Mid or Midnight. Midnight. Oh, yeah. Alison Coleman, the original tick on the cartoon. <laughs> Too, the terror. The terror who's been mostly in hiding is going to be front and center. And the terror back. unleashes hell on everybody. <laughs> everybody, especially the producers. Because of this and he's quite the drama. There are four episodes that are just drumming. That's what that is. There's four straight episodes that are just Jackie doing a concert. The whiplash art is very involved. <laughs> That's so, uh, Jackie really drums, and like we were really excited to get involved with that. Once we kind of found out that was the case, it really, uh, it was, it's, and I think it's fantastic that the terror took that time off to learn to drum. That's how <laughs> evilly ambitious he, he is. He gave me a week and uh, <laughs> went to drum class. No, that's, that was some good scary fun. <laughs> and uh, more Foham. Lots more Foham. <laughs> For Fulham fans, all you Fulham uh, <laughs> cosplayers out there. <laughs> so, Peter, in the first half, we did get to know too much about Tick and his origin story. He just kind of appears. Do you think we'll get to know more in the second half? Uh, well, Tick certainly starts to think about it more. And, um, and you know, I think that was a, that was a big challenge for, for, for you guys at the beginning. Like, like to have the central character who's 
his main his main quality is that he is just constant and he doesn't change, you know. And and uh, and and you know, you, you're watching over 12 episodes. You need to see him kind of change or develop in some way. And and I, I think you handled it really well. It was beautifully handled. Thanks. Great, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, yeah. So you'll see as it, as it, as it goes on. He, yeah. He, Kind of becomes a little more introspective, and uh, and uh, he, his his foundations are sort of shattered a bit, which was which was just really fun and interesting to play, and quite emotional. I found it quite emotional yeah. actually. Yeah. I look forward to seeing more of your relationship too. Now that you guys are public as superheroes or heroes, you're not behind the scenes anymore. How does that change the dynamic between Tick and Arthur? Well, I mean, you know, mild spoiler, but. I can promise there are two more hugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, once we figured out that was the thing, yeah. we just start hugging at the end of every scene and said, like, you can use it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like uh, we just hug and then that was instead of saying cut. Um, I, I feel like Arthur has now stopped refusing the call, you know? So it's not a perfect relationship. It's, it's like any marriage where it's tough and it takes work. And yeah. It's a constant process of figuring out how to communicate with each other. Uh, and that's what it is. It's a crime-fighting marriage I think the two of us have together. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I, I think they're much more unified now because whereas before Tig has just been trying to break through to Arthur, Arthur kind of accepts it now. Yeah. I feel like the second half of the season is more Arthur having to convince everyone else that he's a hero now that the tech has finally convinced him that he's he should be doing this. There was a, there was a bit um, towards the end of this, this the second half, 1B I guess, is that what we're calling it One now B. today? Right? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and uh, where Tick and Arthur, Tick makes a joke and Arthur laughs at the joke, they both share a laugh and it was such a satisfying thing to do. To be like totally on the same page because so often Arthur and Tick are functioning at different yeah. octaves. Yeah, and, and literally. And <laughs> also <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh, don't, don't be so hard. No, it's true! <laughs> and, uh, it reminded me of like, I've got two, I've got two young children and, and, and anyone with kids knows that uh, like it's, it's a real milestone when you laugh at something, like say you're watching Spongebob with your kid and you both laugh at the same joke. It's a real, it's, it's a, such a magical moment, you know, and there was a flavor of that when, when we laughed together as, as Tick and Arthur. It was, it was lovely, wasn't it? I mean, in this scenario, obviously, Arthur is the parent and Tick is the child. <laughs> yeah. But it's that feeling of like, oh, we find the same things funny for once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I love it because there does seem to be a genuine friendship with you all. Does that make the set a really fun place to go to? Uh, <laughs> yes. Or are you good yes, actors? it does. Yes. Really good actors. It remains a very sweaty place to go to, <laughs> but it, it makes life easier because you don't have to spend the energy trying to create the the sort of um, respect and, and closeness and all of that. Yeah. I felt like, I mean, Peter and I hit it off when we met, but we just got closer and closer as the series went on, and yeah. we were very collaborative with each other. There was one time we had a, we had a huge argument, and, yeah. and we're fine now, but yeah. it was like, it was like about, for about three weeks, it was like, well, you know, we there was lawyers me. involved, right. you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but it's, it's totally fine now. I mean, yeah, that's what scared me, yeah. the physical side, the physical side. I, I call it less of an argument, more of a melee. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't, I'm not going to say the word sexual, but it was certainly sensual. It was a sensual. It was, it was a it sensual. It wasn't just yeah. driven by a lust yeah. for violence. No, no. no. <laughs> uh, a lust for lust, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but but it, it makes acting easy when you have all that stuff, all that back you know, ground in our relationship, yeah, where yeah. it's like, that's one less thing to worry about, I have to pretend that I like this guy, um, I actually like this guy, now I just have to remember lines. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 we're, we're really lucky because we all get on so well, yeah. all of us love each other. Don't we guys? Yay! We do. Yeah, yeah. They do, I know they look like they're being sarcastic, <laughs> but, but they really do. Well, before we get to some audience questions, Yara, but we saw a little bit of Miss Lent in that teaser. 
Can you tell us anything about where she's at, come 1B? Um, well, I think the thing with Miss Lynn is that she's stuck in this place where she thought her life was going one way and then it goes another way, and she's just like, how did I get here? And the person that she believed in turned out not to be true. Um, so I think in the second half, she's dealing with that. And I will say, for me personally, where it ends is it was very satisfying. Ah, can't oh, wait. Too All right, so we have two microphones. You can it line up behind each one of them. And uh, we'll get some questions. We'll start here. Well, this incarnation in particular was my first, and I just loved it. I devoured it in two days, which I know you guys probably didn't want. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. But the biggest surprise to me was uh, how compelling Miss Lint was as a villain. And she yeah. became her seething anger and vulnerability were just so powerful, and I was wondering if that was something you guys anticipated while you were filming it. It was a surprise to you, or did you recognize that in the plan? Well, first, thank you. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> um, no, I think I think they wrote it. You you wrote this humanity um, in, in, with Miss Lynn, and then I remember I was freaking out when. Because, you know, Ms. Lynn just has like three lines in the pilot, and then it turned into this amazing role, and I remember telling my friend, I'm like, the only way it can fail is if I fail, because I can't blame it on anybody else, because it's just so great. And I was just freaking out, like, the tone and how, how I was going to approach her, and I did a lot of, like, this in the mirror, you know, like, to <laughs> see how I was going to look while executing someone. And then I went to Ben's office, and you were the one that just really humanized her for me. You told me... The same thing that I just said, like, you, you think your life is going to go one way, and then all of a sudden, it's like years later, and you're like, how did I get here? And I just found that so relatable, and that kind of just grounded her for me, and after that, that's what I used. Yeah, she doesn't okay. really feel like a villain. I mean, she's bad. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are. She's shocking. She's a little shocking. You were going to say, Griffin? Hi, how many points? No, I was just going to say that, uh, it, 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 the question, if, if any of us anticipated that, I feel like I had these sort of resigned conversations with most of the cast members here on stage who were like, Ms. Lynn's the best character, right? <laughs> we all agree, she's the one we all like the most. <laughs> she's fantastic over here.